I talked Amy into uh, doing a video. I wanted our opening to be about 2023. Now, that's a lot to talk about. I thought I would go through month by month, but there's just a slew of information. You know, obviously highlights for me of 2023 was uh, winning with pickpocket in both the International Stallion and uh, and then the Bluegrass was pretty impressive. Uh, won a pretty impressive mile. And although the Bluegrass has never been, you know, it's not like I've ever had a, a bucket list. It's never been on my bucket list, but it was pretty special to win that race. Um, that meant a lot to me uh, watching, you know, Amy had just said to me, she didn't realize how well that Mel Gibson actually did out in Indiana this year uh, quietly, right? Quietly did well and, and had gaps where he just wasn't, you know, he made a break a couple of times. Like he could have had a, a tremendous year with a little more luck uh, leaning to the middle and, and uh, had a good year. You know, I thought about, I tried to think, Amy, I made a list of horses that I personally drove or or had watched or, or thought of. I looked up our trainers. I looked up our um, our horses, tactical mounds, uh, quietly was the biggest earner ever so far at the stable. 300000 in a year. An amazing feat. And Amy, you know, Amy's always a negative Nelly. Why? Oh, you always are. I said to her, I said, you know, you know, we broke that baby. You took care of, of tactical mounds um, her entire year. So just to rewind and tell everybody the story of tactical mounds, uh, about how long was she in the barn before she got hurt? Two weeks? Three weeks? A month? Her on Boxing Day. Was it on Boxing Day? Oh, wow. So there, I didn't remember that. So on Boxing Day, for those of you that are Americans, that's December the 26th. Um, we were just there. Danny was just jogging tactical mounts, just jogging her. And she fell. And when she fell, the track was frozen. It was cold out. She ripped her knees open. It never happens. Babies fall down sometimes, you know, put some bluing on, a little spray on them. They'll be fine. You know, take some hair off and they might cut their knees. She ripped her knees open. Danny said he was just literally jogging along and she ripped them open to the point where she had to go to the university and get cleaned up. It was a disgusting mess. And and you took care of her through all that. And she missed a ton of time. Trained down as a two-year-old. As the two-year-old, she raced at George. And we really didn't think she was going to be a special type of filly. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that race at George. Yeah, she was just or, or She made a... No, Brett she drove her run? once. No. I drove her. She made a break. Come back trotting, right? Yeah, and got placed. But she, yeah, she should have been placed. Yeah, she was first or, or second. second, something like that. Yeah, Brett second. did race her at, at Georgian also. Yeah. I mean, I can look it up. But I'm pretty sure he did. And then um, at the Meadowlands, like she looked like she was coming along nicely. I took her to the Meadowlands and, and was just beat with her. And f funny story, you see how all these storylines kind of intertwine as as the horses race. The filly that got up the inside and beat me was the one that sold for like a ton of money, half a million dollars or something as a broodmare in Bella Chow. That's the oh. one that got up the inside. Her only lifetime win or her best lifetime win for sure was defeating Tactical Mounds in the first division of the New Jersey Sire States. Hmm. So uh, Mark had driven her once and won with her at Poconos. She raced okay that day. We put her away, brought her back, thought she was okay. And then she... Matt Kikini? No, Mark won with her at the Poconos at two. Oh, what, two? Yeah, Matt drove her a couple, few drove her one with her two or three times this year. Yeah. Um, and then at, at three when she came back, and then qualified so strong at Northfield. It's such a big filly. No hobbles on now. She wore the hobbles at two, didn't wear them at three. Qualified her, um, and then went to race her in her first start. It's actually good that she made a break, because when she made that break, it made, gave me pause that maybe she wasn't going to get around a half, and she should go directly to the Meadowlands immediately, rather than... Messing around, racing her at the meadows, kind of hiding her away. We sent her directly to Megan and Scotty, and the rest, uh, the rest is history. Man, what a, what a great year she had. Um, we were in Ohio. I was in Ohio more obviously last year. We were training down uh, pickpocket and memory and imagination, and and we talk about how some of the horses um, were rude. You know uh, how you guys don't get to see all of this, right? And, and Amy can tell you some of the horses. Like, like Tactical Mounds herself was a lunatic training down. Do you remember how hot she was? Mm -hmm. She wore a snake cord, did right up until partway through a three-year-old season. In the mile, a real sweetheart. But getting to the mile, going to the gate, things of that nature, she was really pretty ornery. Warming her up. Warming her up, yeah. yes. So 
you don't see all this stuff and these are things that, that stick out in her memory or my memory and just because a horse is sharp and feeling good and strong doesn't mean they're going to be good horses lots of horses are runaways and we've had horses that are broken hearts we talked about Bryce for Landing how he hasn't turned out to be the horse we wanted to be yet I still got faith I still got faith that he's going to be a good horse a four year old um, but you never know right when then we have another horse that's like Crantini wasted everybody's you know just pushed you to the edge every time training down James always went with him because you had to watch him baby him baby him and um, I was kind of rough on him leading up to his qualifiers but I think that kind of shaped how his season was going to go Scotty did a great job with him keeping him quiet and racing him accordingly then Scotty got hurt he would made a break on me he made a break on Mark and then Yannick was second in the final with him then we raced him in the Mohawk Million and that was a bit of a disaster that was last year was this year so um, the highlights for me definitely I guess the Coles notes we have lots to talk about but the Coles notes were tactical mounds and the season she put together um, people forget how good Crantini was in the middle of summer mm -hmm. and he's coming back now he raced great the other day and and, and I'm really really happy with, with what he's done one of my one of my most favorite horses top five maybe all time to drive was Austral Hanover and we ended up selling him at the end of the summer, and he, he just was such a such a nice horse uh, to be around. Um, I'm thinking aged horses also. Winning in 48-4 with Patrick Leprona was amazing. Uh, just such a nice horse. Um, and then we ended up buying that filly in the middle of summer, Gal Mer Galaxy, I think of Galaxies. And right from the very first time I sat in the race bike, you could tell that one, she had a lot of money in her program. Mark had driven her, said she got out of gear, her feet bothered her. We just made a slight shoeing change to her. It was a bit of an obscure shoeing change. We put a set of uh, mushroom bars on her. Uh, mushroom bars, uh, so you have the horse's foot. It goes around the, the top half of the foot. So the front half of the foot is a full shoe, and then it goes straight across. And rather than have the shoe come back on the heels, there's just a little bar right here in the middle. It sits right on the... Right on the front. Um, when we got to Philly, I had, or the mayor, I had talked to Jason and said, you know, I'm certain that Ron Burke and all the trainers before that had this Philly had tried different things on her. I'm sure flip flops were on her. I'm sure bar shoes were on her and pads were on her. But I doubt there was ever a mushroom bar on her, ever. And that was the shoe of the year for you. Well, it helped a lot of people. Crantini <laughs> wore it for a year. Brace for Lane. Amy's right. We laugh about it. Because, you know, you, you people have to understand. And I say, I used to argue with James about this all the time. James would say, oh, the shoe of the year, or the bridal of the year, or this of the year. There's a million different ways. If you think that, think of Galaxies couldn't have raced with flip-flops on. Well, maybe her. Maybe this different horse. But, you know, Crantini trained down with them. So did Brace for Landing. But they never wore them after that. No. You know, the, any horse can wear a number of different kinds of shoes and just because you found yourself in the winter circle with one doesn't mean you wouldn't have found yourself in the winter circle with another one but yes when a shoe is really starting to work and this was before galaxy this one crantini he was infinitely better when we put them on him he would not wear flip-flops even no. to this day for whatever reason he won't wear them he just he's no good in them whatsoever uh brace for landing he wore them uh and he wore them again at the end and had different types of shoes in between but i did have them on a, on a number of horses so think of Galaxies, for her to just come out of obscurity, um, coming from such a strong barn of Ron Burks, and then coming to our barn, and, and maybe, aside from racing against good horses is a three-year-old in the stakes, certainly never showed any open capability, and immediately, we actually trained her faster, I trained her 49 at Northfield, which is faster than she'd ever gone in her life, even today, now, it's back when Northfield was still. I was going to say, was that post-pylon? That was pre Pylon Pretty fixing. Pylon moving. Yeah, so, she, but still, uh, one of first start in 50 and one has won four times in 50 for us and has really been a good horse. Now, I, it gives me pause this time of year when we're trying to focus hard on the babies. I literally just got an email from somebody saying, hey, I had made an earlier video talking about me potentially selling horse like Stay Close or Think of Galaxy because there wasn't somewhere to race them right away and it's hard. You can't just sell her and think you're going to replace her. You're not going to. So before you, you know, you know, push that button and send it on our way, um, you you really do have to think about things like that. Yes, we didn't buy her to be an open open mare, but she is. And um, 
it's so this is what we all love about this game is not knowing right it's frustrating when you have a brace for landing that hasn't turned out yet right it hurts it bothers you as you put the work in and he just hasn't got there yet and he, maybe he never will and then he's you gonna, bother. he's not even going to fill it till he's like 6 at this nah, point at this we'll rate. see how he looks when he comes in before you say that but then you have other horses we were talking before I went on this little bit of a rant about memory and imagination horses like him that we broke this horse and he was a rotten little troll of an animal kick sour all the time would not do his work just look like you know what he looked like Austral handler too <laughs> except Austral didn't kick he just make breaks we castrated uh, well we castrated both of them but we castrated memory and imagination around Christmas time and he, he did trot once we put the hobbles on him he did trot weight up front and hobbles on he would trot and when he was tr he was trotting especially as a gelding he did his work very well so uh, Daryl always went with him all winter because he never made a break he was always you just do whatever you want with him but never looked like a real nice horse until we almost got him to the races. And you could tell there was talent in there, but now we have him where he's wearing elbow boots and lots of weight. And as a normal analytical human being, you would think, take the weight off him up front, he'll stay out of his elbows and trot. But he wouldn't trot without the weight on. <laughs> he just wouldn't. And even in Eric had him in Kentucky, and a couple of times he said, I just want to take a little weight off him. I said, absolutely not. I'll take the weight off him next year. But we're not going down that road. Because Scotty, you say, geez, you know, he's got a lot of action. That was him. That was him. He took it off him. You could feel him get pacey, and he would he would make breaks. But there's a horse that didn't look like a nice horse until he was a nice horse. And he was a nice horse. I, I shudder. I want to talk to you about the filly that you had last year inside of trading. Mm -hmm. And and uh, both of those horses got stuck in that trailer with Megan. And that really ruined... 2023 for both of them. Memory and imagination flipped his palate that night and, and plummeted through the field. Yep. The place I was in, a horse slid out in my place and was second beat a length in the final going for 235. We had to give him time off because we didn't know if his season was over. After he flipped his palate, we had to inject it. We had to give him just leave him alone for a little bit. And then when we brought him to Kentucky, he was coming in short. He came in short and he was fourth, beat a length and a half going for 400 for second to Carl. Carl won the race. We were fourth. What happens if that trailer doesn't get stuck on the highway that day? Insider trading makes it to the races and races in the consolation. Probably wins it. Or it's close. Memory and imagination isn't stressed out, doesn't flip his palate, ends up in the same spot I was and finishes second, comes into Kentucky, sharp as attack, tight, ready to go. And I'm not saying I beat Carl. No. But I'd have to think I was second. So... You know, it's just weird how, how the racing season goes. You have some horses that you buy and you want to be a good horse and just isn't. And then you have other horses that you buy and you're like, this horse is terrible. Terrible little animal. And he ends up being such a nice horse. Arson. We have one of those every year. Everybody has one every year. If you sat every trainer down right now and said, I need your top ten and your worst ten. Or if you have a smaller stable, top five, worst five, top two, worst two. You would be very surprised with what you found in June or July. You always have those trainers. Oh, I knew he was a good one from the start. Well, of course, you always have horses that just look talented. But they have to look talented, have a great work ethic, stay healthy, mm -hmm. stay sound, and then, you know, draw good, get a good drive. These are all the things that go into that statement, and it's hard It's hard to do that. And we were lucky. We bought ours, and here's Pure Country's three-quarter brother. I think three-quarter brother. Definitely half brother. You know, it could be a nice horse. could be a really nice horse. His sister, Charleston, was a nice filly. Did you see she just got beat in the Breeders' Crown? She was second, just beat. That's who Bob beat this year in Indiana. Yeah. Yeah, she raced unbelievably good. She just got beat by the good filly, uh, the good mare, Bob McClure drives. Oh, uh, Stacey's filly? Yeah, just beat her at the wire. Um, so I guess... If you were going to put five horses on my radar for the year, Austral Hanover for sure. Arson, Pickpocket, Memory and Imagination, all three of those horses were fantastic all year. And then uh, a throw-in of aged horses, I would say, can't make five, going to have to make six. It's going to have to be uh, Pink of Galaxies and Patrick Lepron. And obviously, Centro's year was 2023, but he still meant a, very, a, a lot to us, and he'll be the last thing we talk about today. So... 
who are your highlights before we start talking about what took place this year? Who are your highlights of the year? Like, I don't know what you mean by that. Things that you liked the most about the stable this year, all the horses that raced, whether you had them or didn't have them, horses, you're like, wow, mm -hmm. that horse meant a lot to us, to you, to them, to the stable. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a tough question. Well, so, in fact, I asked you this question an hour ago, so it's not Yeah, I know, but I thought we were just going to converse no. about it the way we were just talking. But we weren't really conversing. I was conversing. Well, you were trying to peel an orange and nod your head. So, that's usually the way it goes. You have all the horses right here. Who? who no, I have. Well, who's the horse you took care of insider trading? And, yeah, you know, people, you can say, oh, she only made whatever, 40, 50,000. She's a good filly. She went in 56, and she's going to be a very nice horse no, as a three year old. She's too know. tough. Too fast and loves her work way too much not to be a nice horse. And when we get down here and talk about the babies, it's the exact reason that I have my favorites. Of well, the I I feel like this year more than previous years, I am more excited about these two-year-olds becoming three-year-olds because I think there were a lot that, you know, they they were okay, but I think that they'll. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with just saying, like, the insider trading, yeah, she didn't win the Breeders' Crown, she didn't make 200000 she's a good horse, and people have to realize that. I'm not disappointed in the year she had. One trailer say, ride like, might have completely changed yeah. how much money she made this year, right? because and it had played a huge role in the rest of her year. And I feel like most of our Ohio breads that are two coming three, yeah. I, I think there'll be a lot more talent yes. show through um, from that batch. It's a good point. I can tell you the toughest two-year-old of the year, trailer ride or not, was, was Gypsy Hill. Yes. Gypsy Hill hurt himself. He bruised his cannonball. For any of you that are horsemen out there, and you have a trotter that bruises. You don't have that, to actually bruise yourself. I didn't. I'm a little tougher than that. But bruises that shin, the cannonball behind. It is very painful. And because they need to be in training, and they're racing stake season every week, two weeks, ten days, it's so hard to get that under control. He raced almost all season with that bothering him. It's what caused the break. His two breaks this year caused both of them. And he worked through it in Delaware. I was thoroughly shocked that how good he was in, in Jug Week this year. That horse is so tough. I get a note from Jacob Schaefer two weeks ago saying, you will not believe how good Gypsy Hill looks when you get him back. So you're right. The Ohio Breds, you know, you had horses that were on the cusp. I'm fancy like we didn't know what she'd be like. She's going to be a solid grassroots filly this year. Born to Dance is going to be a solid pacer also this year. Both of those horses, the Dance and Yankees, are exactly what drove me to buy one of my favorite fillies from Ohio for sure in right. Rose Run Alexander. Yeah, Alexander yeah. So I think you're right. We have a lot of horses coming back. Gypsy Hill, Sedona Hill, Purple People Eater, Irresistible Sun. Quietly, not that I think he's as good as those horses because he has some big shoes to fill if you're going to talk in that manner but a horse that I think will be the greatest improved horse Prince Charmer Prince Charmer I think Prince Charmer I haven't even seen him yet but I know how big he was getting at the end of the year I think he's going to be the most improved horse of 2023 in Ohio for sure like I would be very shocked if not all of those horses were at least grassroots horses I think Gypsy Hill Irresistible Sun have a chance to, to continue their way through Purple People Eater if she comes back if she can get better, stronger, her feet, you know, her knees hold up all year long. I think she could be the type of filly that could that could hang with the Sire Steak fillies. But you're right. I think our best chance right now sitting in a car with none of them even in the barn yet, well, purple is, but that's it, is Gypsy Hill, I think, and, and Sun. I think both those two horses could potentially be Sire Steak horses this year. And you're right. I, I think the, a lot of improvement to be had in... Um, a lot of improvement to be had in Ohio. The thing that opened my the thing that opened my eyes the most this year was uh, one, how well we did in Kentucky, Lexington included, but how important Oak Grove and, and Corbin mm -hmm. are going to be in in our stake bracket moving forward. You know, uh, Pickpocket was beaten the final, but he wasn't the Pickpocket of Lexington. We didn't have the hobbles on him yet. He was just starting his career. Already had taken a mark, I think, in fifty seven or fifty six or fifty eight or something. It looked great. Um, but Arson looks so dominant in, in, uh, he looks so good. Oh, he could beat, I guess, too many captains beat me in the final, but he looked great. Um, we had a great run in Oak Grove. 
Lexington, we were very fortunate. Uh, pickpocket and arson looked amazing. Here we have a two-year-old pacing colt that took a mark at 15 apiece last quarter, 26 seconds in Lexington. And we have a two-year-old trotter. I went in 54 with him and then 53 with him in the bluegrass. He looked amazing. And yes, the... And yes, the... The break in the breeder's crown was crippling for me. It really bothered me. But you could see the transition, how tough it was. You could see... You couldn't see it. I could feel quite a difference between he was used to racing in Lexington and now he was on a stone dust track and in and pouring rain and the hard hard track in Indiana quite a difference quite a difference so yeah so India so Ohio anybody else you're Philly insider trading obviously anyone else that uh, caught your eye in this week no one caught my eye that you liked mm. okay 2023, any horse that you enjoyed watching race all year? Well, for sure, the Kentucky horses. Yeah. That was, but that was, I think, also because it was new and we're not used to racing there. And that's true. It was cool to be a contender. That's and, important. In that jurisdiction. That's very important. And moving yeah. forward, that's going to be tough. But I think, you know, it's always going to be tough. Anybody that says, ah, we got some Kentucky horses this year, well, good for you. Everybody has so Kentucky like, horses. Yeah, does, yeah. So it, it's always tough to be a contender. You know, the day I won the Bluegrass, there were two other divisions in the Bluegrass. Right. So it wasn't like I beat everybody. No, I won one division. And when it when it comes to Kentucky, if you guys, you know, I, I, I love the one thing I have to do that we have to do in 2024 is more have, have more social gatherings the way we did before the pandemic. Because meeting everybody again last night, talking to everybody, it was such a great atmosphere. And then again, I didn't quite get to do it at the at the open house in Ohio because I was on the track. But it's just such a great feeling having our clients come out and just be so excited about what we're doing. And um, we need to get back to that. We need to get back to more of a social aspect of the stable. It's our staple. It, it, what, it's what makes us us. And and uh, we certainly haven't done enough of it in it. Since the pandemic, I think we get used to just social distancing away from everybody get and not getting back yeah. into that sit at a table and talk. We need to get back to that in 2024. Um, so I'll run through what, what I, just quick Cole's notes on what I saw uh, when I look through um, my notes quick. Now again, forgive me if I miss a horse like Tactical Mounds, very important we say that because she's not on my list because when I went through Anthony McDonald or went through Harry Poulton or Jason McGinnis, I didn't see them. It wasn't until I went through Megan. I'm like, oh my God. Of course, you know, she was, she made the most money. There's a filly that won on Hamiltonian Day out of the 10 hole. You can't beat that. I, I said Kentucky. That was probably, that was my, my number one highlight, that race. Or was that the race from where she was out the she whole way? She was out the whole way from the 10 and hole. And then, yeah, that was, I didn't even know, like, the purse or, or any, like, I didn't know any of it. I was just watching it. Was it was just how good and it was like, she was. Like, really proud of her because, like I said, she she came a long way. It's so nice, too, to play a role in, you know, having people notice the trainers that we do business with is, you know, Megan and Scotty. Scotty just had a tremendous year. My brother, James. Here's our driver, my brother in Canada, the leading driver. He's going to win the O'Brien Award. It's, there'd be a riot if he didn't. Scott Zeron is going has already won the Dan Patch unanimous winner driver of the year, I believe. Uh, or was that the Oshawa? It doesn't matter. He's gonna win driver of the year. So you have Scotty and James, people that drive for us. And and you know, we joke about it, but for Scott and Megan to get in the car, and people don't realize this. You know, when he came, when when Megan was in Ohio, in the barn, when the open house was was going on. Scotty was on the track in Ohio when the open house was going on. They drove seven hours yeah. to be there. My brother Mark flew there because he had obligations, but they drove seven hours to be there. And to have people want to see you succeed like that, it, it is a tremendous feeling, and it's a, it's a real feather in our cap, and uh, it just, it means a lot to me, and, and I know it means a lot to you, but, um, you know, to get feedback from my brother on the horses at the track, to see James become James, you know, even before... There was an Amy and an Anthony. There was a James and an Anthony. And mm -hmm. to see uh, to see my brother come from where he was and, and to see Scott Zeron. You know, he hates, yeah, I'm sure he hates it. I remember when he was the little kid in the winter circle doing the Z, take his dad's whip and do the Z. And, and, and he, I, I never want to bring it up because I'm sure it's embarrassing. But um, <laughs> to see him, see that little kid 
become Scott Zeron is it's amazing. I I was always one of the young guys. Now I'm one of the old guys, and and uh, it's funny how life is. But it, it's tremendous to watch those two kids in particular. One, my brother, and two, uh, such a nice guy, and Scotty do so well. And for them to play such a role in the stable is we're very very lucky to have that happen. And I shouldn't downplay the fact that Mark came here. And Mark wanted to do the commentary. Knew that we needed somebody to do commentary. And wanted to do the commentary. And did an amazing job. I didn't tell him that enough. But everybody that I talked to said, Oh my God, uh, your brother did such a great job in the commentary. It was unbelievable. And he does. Because I forget it too sometimes. You know, the stories I tell. Most of them he was in them. But he has, he has an entire library of obscure, ridiculous stories that, that happened. Now... He does have that Freddy filter. They're not all completely truthful. <laughs> but but his, his one, understanding of horse racing. Two, unique view of, of horses themselves. Because people forget, and people don't know maybe, Mark McDonald was an incredible trainer before he was an incredible driver. You know, that guy had a stable that always did well when he was on his way up. So it, it's great to have people like that come out. It, it certainly meant a lot to me. So looking at the year quickly, uh, the first part of our year was dominated by looks You're like at money. 26 minutes, just so you know. I see it. What's wrong with that? You've talked for you like 40 just seconds. Start, you're just starting your list yeah, now? Yeah, but it's just going to run through quick. But you, well, you could have sped it up by you've you know, already talking. talked about these things. So then oh it won't take God. long to talk about them again. Oh my God, it keeps going. Relax. The early part of the year was looks like money. People forget out of sight, out of mind. You know, Amy was talking about earlier how quickly the news cycle and even our personal news cycles go by. We forget about things that just happen. You know, how much three-point blue chip meant to us winning the Matron. I bet you there's some of you out there that forgot he won the Matron. If I said, hey, who was the horse we won the Matron with? I bet you there's some people that forget. Oh, I just, wouldn't. Just, mm -hmm. well, of course you weren't, but you wouldn't forget. But it, there'd be the type of thing that I would forget along the way. Sure, because I'm more focused on the today and the tomorrow. Yesterday is yesterday, and I, and, I, and I say that. This is why it's so hard for me. It was so hard for me when I won the International Stallion, went back. I was more focused about going to supper. I had just won a major stake That's race. <laughs> I had just won a major stake race, and I wanted to make sure that our, our... I didn't even know it was a major stake race until everyone was congratulating you after the fact. <laughs> and I was like... Oh, I guess that was kind of a big deal. It was, and I got off the track as quick as I could to ensure that our dinner plans were were in place with open table. That's the, that's where I was going. I came off the track, hung up the lines, walked over to my car, opened up my phone, and made sure that open table had the right amount of people. I could get the right amount of people at our table. No, you got interviewed because you made me take the horse back on the race bike. No, that was with the bluegrass. My flip -flops and that was my, the bluegrass. That was the first one. Oh, then maybe you did. So, but even when I get interviewed and you went back with your flip flops on, it would have been funny if one of your flip flops. That fell was off. really, yeah. <laughs> that I would have been not so funny. Comfortable in that <laughs> five minute walk. But when I left, it didn't dawn on me that even I got interviewed, it didn't dawn on me what had just happened until I, I, I specifically remember we were halfway through supper and I had just got a text, hey, geez, that was a great win for, for the stable and for you and for the horse. And it dawned on me, you're such an idiot. You know, I didn't <laughs> soak it all up. Here I am more worried about filling my face than I was taking a minute to recognize the achievement that we'd all just done together. So the next week, and I didn't I didn't plan it because you can never just plan to win. And I certainly wasn't going to plan to win with Pickpocket. Again, he was 12 to 1 or 17 to 1 in the second one or 10 or something. Gabe Pruitt said to me after, he said, I don't know if there's ever been a horse that won two major stake races on Grand Circuit Week and was over 10 to win on, 10 to 1 on both of them. Now that's like a Hollywood Hayden type stat. You would never know it. Yeah. But he specifically sent me that message. That's cool. It was. I won the second one. No, no. I made sure then. Somebody took the horse back and they came around with the van and said, you want to ride back? No. I walked back. And the coolest thing ever, which was not shocking to me at all, every box, so if, if you've ever been to the Red Mile, there's boxes right against the Hubra. And there's boxes up on the second floor and everybody's clapping. Now the clapping, the horses left, the applause had died down and I'm walking down the track and every single box I went by, somebody held out their hand, shake your hand, hey, great job with the horse. And it's, it's, it is a truly amazing thing. If you haven't been to Kentucky, you got to remember Grand Circuit Week is right at the same time as the sale also. Mm -hmm. If you haven't been to Kentucky and you have find yourself with 
two weeks holidays. Make them Grand Circuit Week in Lexington 2024. An amazing spectacle. Now, uh, back to the back to the list. Okay, so I think we've summed up this list. Pickpocket. No, whoa, 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 whoa. You're getting ahead of yourself. That was the summer. Then we're going to start the winter. Oh. People forget. Remember we said out of sight, out of mind? And the news cycle and how we forget about things and we Can got to three point. Looks like money. Maybe one of the best horses we ever had. On his way to having a tremendous year and got injured. Now he's back. He's back. You guys are going to see him very, very soon. Harry said he's training back. Uh, I know. I saw him go. I saw him train him at 25 when I was here a month ago. He looks he's amazing. Hey, you, you, baby. You can't put Per Lucky on him. Well, Per Lucky was a good horse, a war horse. How much did he make? We, and that was the one thing. I don't want to talk about it because we don't really talk about wins and money and this and that. Kelly told me last night we were on the doorstep of 300 wins last year. Oh, yeah. She did say that. Yeah. Didn't quite get there. but And I had no idea. If you'd asked me, I would have said, I don't know, 140, 150 wins or something. 300 wins almost. We had like seven horses made $100,000 last year, which I was shocked. I was. Made or almost made? Is that included? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Have to get the six figures. Tiger didn't get there. Two years in a row. So, uh. It's because he's depressed. Because he's depressed. Yeah, okay. Uh. The start of the year showed us. Looks like money. How good he could be. How he looked like he was going to be. But also showed as we ended the year. That wasn't. 2022. Yes, it was. The winter of 2023 is when it looks like oh, money was yeah. winning. I won with him in January. The I just kindergarten looked it up. started in like April. Yes, we rested and he him. got two qualifiers, and you were a little. Do you bit, want to go back and you look were it a up. little bit miffed that he was qualifying going into a kindergarten leg? No, it wasn't a kindergarten leg. That was the first or a race. Graduate, whatever yes. that is. And then he went to the. That wasn't race. in like February. That was no, in like April. He won in January. It looks like money won twice in January. I won his last time. Oh, and bit. then he got shut down. Thank you very much, Amy. So uh, a little less talking, a little more listening. I think would be. I have no problem going back <laughs> into the house right now. Uh, Locatelli <laughs> set the track record, equaled the track record in December. And that was December. He did December sixth. So but, far, this video has nothing to do with. What are you going to call this video when you? This is our opening. It? This okay. is our opening. This is a reflection of 2023. I'm going to miss some horses. I'm going to miss some things that went on. Right? You talked about Per Lucky. He's not on my list. Do you want me to add him to the list? No. Nope. Per Lucky, another just a great horse. We sold him, but a, another nice horse. This is going to be tough. I've had a couple of emails and messages that come in. I just saw them come across the screen talking about me talking about stay close and think of galaxies and what everybody has to understand is nothing can stay the same forever, right? We have to constantly keep moving. And just like your favorite football team or baseball team or basketball team or any sports team, there are going to be trades where you say, why would you do that, right? And those emails can be directed to Amy no. at the stable. <laughs> no, they <laughs> cannot. <laughs> No. So the winter was kind of slow. January, February was just a, a mixed bag of horses racing well. Much like we want to have this year. As we get into April, we saw uh, some horses emerge that looked impressive. Uh, Spitfire overseas looked great. Um, Crantini looked very good also. I was really happy with them. Happy again with uh, the way Ohio was shaping up, right? Now, we had... Uh, Buzz and, and Austral that were starting to get ready. I took Buzz to Oak Grove and I, I regret doing that now. Not not because of the distance or anything. He just didn't get over the track as well and didn't race as well. And ended up getting back in the, the you know, getting back in the swing of things midway through the summer. But it just wasn't the way I had planned it out happening. Um, it was just one of those things, you know. Steve and I talked last night about how Park Slope and, and nothing to do with Stacy. It just didn't work out well sending that filly down to Dayton and, and I told him I said it was just a hindsight thing I, I just thought it was the right move at the time I thought bringing tailgate buzz to Kentucky was the right move and there's going to be times when it, clearly I'm wrong and, and other but times then there's other right. times like more than you know where you race him a couple times send him to the meadows yes yep and then so on that's right it, th but that's the great thing about this game you know you can never be right you can never be wrong but um, never focus on the low points and try not to focus too much on the high points, but make a mental note of them when you can. So spring started, uh, smoking out Irish girl, Coop. I was so impressed with the way Coop felt, right? She just, she was so crazy at two. I don't know if you remember how nuts she was at two. 
And then I for her to, that she was as a year old. Oh yeah, she was <laughs> wild. And then for her to come out at three and just there was just something there you could tell. She had such a great year. Swinging Senorita just looked awesome. She was racing day two. I'll check that out. She looked great. It just looked like we were poised to have a great year. Two year olds aren't even starting yet, by the way. They haven't even started yet. They were just, uh, yeah, they were just starting to train down. <laughs> do, you, do you mind? Do you keep tell? Do you ever hear a watch pot never boils? Do you know what that means? Yes. If you keep staring at the time, it's just going to keep getting higher, and we're not going to get done. So, um, I was so impressed with the way our sophomores were looking. Um, you know, you talk about a horse. Spitfire receives racing today. He's at 98,000. He needs to finish third out of the nine hole to get to 100. It's unlikely. Possible, but unlikely. Here's a horse that had, uh, flipped his heart at the start of the summer. We, I never really had that happen before. It happened with Patrick, yeah, that was but it reverted right away. Spitfires did not. He needed to have medical intervention. Um, I forget the name of the medication they used. It doesn't matter. Anyway, they put him back in, and nobody knew it was going to happen for him to come back and finish fifth in the final off all that time. It was just insane. You know, it wasn't it wasn't movie material. You'd have to win for it to be that. But you have no idea how, the odds, the, the odds of him coming back and racing productively in that race. It was unbelievable. You know, I, I am an optimistic person, and even I had positive Jesus might be a lot to ask here. Mm -hmm. And then when he went out and qualified, when he went out and qualified, I was like, geez, he's a pretty good qualifier. It's more than enough to get him in the final. But really, there's that voice in, in my head saying, you're an idiot. Like, this this is not going to work out well. And really, it just comes down to what what do we have to lose, right? Mark's going to drive him. He's going to protect him. If he can stay a scab of bone, great, which means get a check. Great. He drive him. Yes, he did. Mark drove him in the final. He was fifth. I didn't drive him. Ronnie Wren didn't go. Mark drove him. He finished fifth. He drove him great. The horse was amazing. And he's had a great year. That horse missed all of his stake season and still has $98,000 made on December 30th. That's what kind of a year he had. But again, now we left with the same problem. We kept Resolute Bay and Renegade Gypsy over last oh, year. Oh, I don't think that's a bad idea to keep him. Neither do I, but that was a disaster also. Mm -hmm. So these are mistakes that can happen also. There's no way to know because you don't know how they're going to mature. You don't know who they have to race against next year. You don't know what kind of trips they're going to get. Are they going to stay sound? Are they going to get sick? All these things, all these variables come into play, and they're down the road. You can't change any of them today. We get into Kentucky with Tailgate Buzz. Uh, Eric had four or five there. Eric had a tremendous year. Him and Kathy, just they do a good job. Good old school horse people, and you don't see many. You know, I, I'm... I, it's hard to find that, that old school mentality and Eric and Kathy are for sure you know and, and a lot of the people we surround ourselves with Jason's younger than me but he has that old school you know the thing I love about Jason everything is meticulous you know he, he, I like the fact that he hated people writing on his training board do you ever notice his board nothing is on it except for the training and the jogging like me I'll have uh, yeah, where the horse's hobbles go, sh who got shod the other day, you know, do I want to make some shoeing changes? I'll write them on the board. I'll come in the next day. They're all gone. I said, what are you doing? He show me a picture. I took a picture of him. Just... He can't have anything on it, right? All Everything is neat. It's like Curtis. It's like OCD. When Curtis helped. No, it is OCD, but it's a perfect kind of OCD. I remember, I never forget telling this story. Curtis, so many of you who met Curtis, flies a drone, does all simulcasting everywhere. The, he's a genius when it comes to you know, editing, simulcasting, and stuff like that. So, Curtis uh, was working with Lloyd in the simulcasting department for 38 minutes. Yeah, uh, th you're a little off topic. I know, but this is a great story. Um, and Curtis came to work with me. Now, Curtis never touched a horse. I'm not going to tell a noble test story. If you want to <laughs> hear the funniest story of in your entire life, and some night we're sitting in a bar having a beer, ask me to tell you the noble test story with Curtis <laughs> McDonald. It's far too long to tell it. It is the funniest story ever in the history of stories. So Curtis, who's involved in a number of funny stories, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Curtis comes to work for me. I'm back and forth, you know. I, I, this is a different world, a different time. I'm driving in Ottawa, but I'm trying to break into the driver's colony. I'm still driving a Quinny Exhibition Raceway in Belleville uh, because I did well there. So I would go back on Fridays there and then come back. So I said to Curtis, Curtis and I were doing like 15 or 20 horses by ourselves. God. Like it was insane. 
So he said to Curtis, listen, bud, do me a favor. Just get done what you can. Here's the list of the horses that are important, right, that need to go out, that are racing this week. The other ones, if you can throw them out in the field, I'll be back tomorrow. We'll jog them all up. I come back the next day. Curtis had jogged half the barn. <laughs> Just half the barn. But there is now a stereo system put in the barn. All the buckets are perfectly aligned down the down the shed row. Everything is asymmetrical. Everything is in perfect working order. Yet, we race horses for a living and only half of them got jogged. <laughs> but that's how Curtis, he, he probably started his day, got half of them jogged, said, I can't take it anymore, and finished putting the horses away, put some out in the field, and then corrected the entire barn. That is Curtis in a nutshell. And that is Jason somewhat. I love the fact that Jason's barn looks professional all the time. When I when I had my horses, when I trained, yeah, our barn looked good, but I, I always spent more time focusing on the horses. And that is not to say that Jason doesn't spend time focusing on the horses, but he doesn't leave without everything being done right. And I love that about, about Jason. And uh, the old school mentality he has is the exact same. Right? Harry, old school. Dominic, although he's the exact same age as me, old school. And I love that about them. It's hard uh, when we're in such a game that is changing so much. For those of you that have ever been in this game, right? Think of how it was 10 or 20 years ago and how much it's changed in the last 10 years. It is unbelievable. Anyway, as Amy was saying, I was a little off topic for three minutes, but it was a funny story and worth telling. Noble Tess, way better than that story. So, um... The Phillies are qualifying in the spring. Crantini, everybody's looking good. We get down to Oak Grove. I'm running around a little bit uh, between Oak Grove and back to Pennsylvania, Ohio, wherever I have to be, wherever I can be. Uh, we had the frustrating thing where Spitfire had flipped his heart. Um, got that corrected. It, it's just an incredible year for him. We had Yo Mister was a, a very pleasant surprise. Stacy and Brett did such a great job with this horse in Kings County. And I know that, that Stacy was saying, you know, she wanted... Yo, Mister Back. Well, we're going to train Yo, Mister Back in Ontario, and I don't. I'm not going to pay somebody to, to train their horses back. Yeah. Yo, Mister will be uh, reunited with Stacy at some point, but it won't be right now. He's going to come to Ontario and train down here, Kings County. I have ready to go, and he likely will go to Miami Valley. He's raced there before and done oh. well. well. Hey, you turkey! That's still talking. You want to come in for a minute? How's the spaghetti smell? Yes. Good. So everybody, we're talking about this year. Well, do you remember what your favorite thing that happened this year? Oh, wait, before you answer that, all the times we went to swim in pools and went to get good food and stayed in hotels and went every place to race the horsies. Who was your favorite horse this year? Who's your favorite horsey this year? Um, a rainbow horse. A rainbow horse. Okay, we don't have that a rainbow horse, but uh, do you have any favorite things that happened this year? Other than your Christmas and you turning five yesterday? My birthday! So what happened this year? What was your favorite thing? Hmm, I'm going to cake and I want to have a party. You want to have a party? Well, we just invite everybody. It seems like you're maybe not putting the effort into this list that, uh, that I have after 43 minutes. Uh, so we watched the cult no. show up. I was so pleased to see Arson. Pickpocket, memory and imagination, even affection. All these horses were doing so good for us. The three-year-olds were doing great throughout the summer. The summer was dominated, for the most part, by uh, Tactical Mounds, who was amazing. Uh, Patrick, Patrick De Prana was good all summer long. So, Stay Close showed up in uh, the meadows. Hey, hey, you're not ruining my video. Stay Close showed up in the meadows. Hey, anyone. Think of galaxies, burst onto the scene. I, I'd written here... Uh, Memory to magic, or, uh, insider trading. Flashfly had her moments where we thought she was going to break through. I can't wait to see her this year and pull the shoes. Do you see her in the barn? She's in the barn. She looks amazing. Um, the biggest thing for me heading into 2024, I will tell you right now, is Lover's Play. I want to see how she trains down. She yeah, looks so good. And I wrote here in the span of one weekend, we had wins from. We had wins from uh, from Gypsy, from Gypsy Hill. Hey, you, shush. From Gypsy Hill, Swinging Senorita, I'm Fancy Like, Irresistible Sun, Sedona Hill, Purple People Here, and Activation in all one weekend. It was an amazing run that weekend. That was the same weekend that Stay Close, I think, won. Uh, 52 in a piece. Maybe it was a few after, I'm not sure. 
Nothing but a dreamer came back to life. We got him over to the meadows and then brought him back to Ontario. That worked out fantastic. And then the fall was taken over by Grand Circuit Week. Pickpocket, Arston. Memory and Imagination kind of dabbled there. And then Corbin to end off the season. Uh, and in between that was Jug Week. I looked. Uh, we'd made the break with uh, made a break with Born to Dance. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, I never missed the top two. Oh, I was third with one. And Jason went over a thousand. That he won his thousandth yep. win as a trainer. You're right. You're right. He did. It, it was a, a, a great week. It always is a joke week. It was fantastic. And then Corbin was such a new experience for me. You want to see one of the coolest racetracks you've ever seen? Go to Corbin. No grandstand. There's a tent there for people wagering. You have a couple of drinks. There's a place for the judges and for the video crew. But it's backed right onto a mountain. You can see where they blasted the mountain away and built this track there. Hey you, shh. Looking into the back stretch is all trees. Looking into the home stretch is just a mountain. It is an amazing place to watch the sale. Adeline Hope McDonald, you will shush or I will fire you out this window. You can't watch a video of this guy's talking. And at the end of the year, the sales came. Addy, shh, the sales came. Um, it's unfair just to mention a couple of horses, but we got all of our top horses, right? Aunt Lily looked amazing in Ohio. Rose Run Alexandra and Bluebird Tuxedo Hill were horses that I thought were, were very impressive. Now we picked out other horses that I think uh, look amazing too. Wander Hill looks great training right now. Who else? Cadu. Cadu is my, my top pick, even though it wasn't based on finance or, or value. It was always based on value, but how his yearling video looked was amazing. Turn that down right now. Then we go to Kentucky. Oh, we just need some help. You're never alone. Just give us a yell. Online. I will throw both of you out the window. That wasn't me. Right out the window. How are you? Shh. Uh, we went to Kentucky. We got our first Poppy Rob Hanover horse in uh, country dancing. We had already got... Um, Adeline. We had already got our first... Uh, shine, Fire and Shine was our first... Uh, Catch the Fire. Catch the Fire. We'd ever had Captain Incredible. We got the horse that Daniel wanted that I, I thought so so much of. He looked great on the track yesterday too. Pelican Al, Charlie May's brother. That was like a last minute thing. We remember we were looking at him. We were about to leave, and I said, I remember picking up the phone and calling one of our Ohio clients. You know who you are. And mm-hmm. I said, Hey, if I bought Charlie May's brother, would you be interested? He goes, I already got a colt. I don't know. I don't really know. And at that point, I'm like, ah, I don't really have much interest in it. But Charlie May's brother didn't take one of the loop. He so real quick. What a nice horse he is too, Pelican Ale. Amy got her favorite horse of the wholesale in Melisandre. She looked great. I got the other. I like Jim her. Panzi. I like her too. The other Jim I actually Panzi. like all three of them. Yeah, they all look nice. My favorite filly we picked up, Grand Slam Deal. She's already destroyed and killed three aprons. Yeah. Three apron asides. She's convicted of. She killed three of them. A bit of a kicker. But that will dissipate. And actually, one of the most... It was so funny because almost every year, one of those throw-in horses ends up being one of my favorites. Uh, Insider trading I loved last year. Uh, we bought her. Remember, you picked her out. At the start of the set. Yeah. Green Glitter uh, can absolutely fly. And I mean fly. And just she was a throw-in. She was... A dollar amount horse. This horse fits nicely in the bucket. I like her. I think she was twenty two thousand. Or twenty two thousand, whatever it was. That's a that's a win for us. And she looked so good. We bought our first maritime bread at public auction in Woodmere Betchet. That is Woodmere Steel Deals three quarters sister. Mm-hmm. And then we went to Harrisburg. Uh, the three that really caught my eye at Harrisburg. Now, I, we bought a lot that I loved. I thought were great buys. Princess Dream, uh, and, and uh, Emily loves it. Emily said she's amazing. Princess Dream was was a super easy purchase. Trevino on Green was a horse I didn't really want. I wish I'd have walked. No, not now. I don't. At the time, I should have walked away. But I waited to see what he would go through the ring as. This is Swinging Senorita's brother by Green Manalishi, and I'm thinking he's going to bring sixty, seventy. I'm not paying sixty or seventy thousand for this horse. He would literally have to walk past me, and and. And, and be given to me for, for me to buy him. And virtually it was. 
thirty-six thousand dollars for for that horse. Uh, what did we get for the filly? Sixty, right? Sixty, sixty-two. And she made all. I thought, who, swing Sing Yeah, I don't think 60. she was very expensive. No, no, she was twenty-seven as baby. Oh, I were mean, you in Harrisburg, me? sixty, sixty-two. Okay. I think sixty. I think. Yeah. Sixty. And made three thirty, and this is her brother by Green Manalishi. It, it just, it was mind-boggling at the time that he was stalled out at. at I don't know how I got to 36. I must have been 36 from 35. Yeah. It's a wonder they took that bit. I usually don't like that. It's usually 38. I think, I think I had walked away at 35, if I'm not mistaken. And the guy's looking at me, 38, 38, and I said, no, 36. And I think he hesitated and, and said 36, and the guy took it. If I'm not mistaken, that's what took place. And I don't regret it. The horse was amazing. And actually, the horse that you did pick out, you remember you picked him out? That was Scott Zeron's top pick from all the horses he went with. Was was uh, the Pastor Stephen horse? Um, what's his name? Uh, um, the priest. The priest. We could have stayed here till eleven o'clock. I never would have guessed the priest. <laughs> the priest was he was Scott's uh, well, one I of his top call picks. Him Father Stephen, which isn't right either. No, that's what I just put. You put. <laughs> I put Pattern Stephen for some reason. I, I didn't even put the S in. So uh, the priest. I have no idea what's he, what he's going to be. Um, I know he's pretty well bred. You had picked him out. This was the day. So when you guys go to Harrisburg, you have the three days of the sale. Then you have it was our old shopping day. Yeah, our, that was that was the stable shopping day when we first started. It was the day after the main sale. You had the mixed sale, brood mares, and then you had these like Indiana, New York, Delaware, and that's where and the random priest, other just random horses they found in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, the priest was in there. So Amy picked him out and he looks good. Looked really good on the track. Scott really liked him. Now, <clears throat> two things that, that will end this video at 51 minutes and 43 seconds. The retirement of Sintra. And how much Sintra meant to the stable. Sintra... Sintra looked like he was on the decline. Oh, it's okay. Sintra looked like he was on the decline when we got him. And for him to come alive and be the horse he was, and put me in a place personally, in that in the winter circle, the Gold Cup and Saucer, that I, I actually had come to the realization, or at least the thought process, that it would never happen. I would just simply never win the Gold Cup. I was going to be the Oakland A's of. Well, they've won the World Series when they were the different Oakland A's. Pick a team that's never won the World Series or the Super Bowl, or if there's a team out there. Or if there's a city that has a grouping of teams that have never won anything, that would be the team I would use, or the city I would use. Indians, <laughs> yeah. um, I just, I just believed it was never going to happen. I guess inside, I was just wired that way. It's never going to happen, and it did. And Cintra won the Open. He looks so good. That race that I won in 50, and then Hunter Myers come back and won in 49 at the Meadows. He was just so dominant and such a good horse. And <clears throat> I had never seen a horse with that much something. This was a horse in the twilight of his career. I had never seen a horse like that in my life. And such a special animal. And we were given the opportunity to retire him with, with as much dignity as we could, and, and we did. And, uh, you know, hats off to the Maneri family for taking him also. It was just a, an amazing thing. And then uh, to end our year was the open house in Ohio, which was impressive. It was very, very good. And it was nice. As I said when I started this video, the thing that we have to get back to at the stable is the thing that we are always good at, which was making our clients feel at home. Having those social outings. And we're going to get back to that in 2024. I can assure you of that. It was so nice last night to come out and meet with everybody, talk with everybody, and and uh, just take in the races. It was a it was a great night, and that's something we will get to get back to in 2024. So 2023 was an incredible year. Uh, I'm not really in a hurry to usher it out, which is the first time I can say that in a while. I'm not in a big hurry to usher 2023 out, but excited about what lies ahead in 2024. So after 54 minutes and 20 seconds, three yawns, two visits from Addy, and a long list of horses and discussion, I can honestly say this has been one of the best years of my life. In racing, for sure. 
obviously, aside from getting married to Amy and having our kids, this was one of the best best years of my life, and I hope it was for you also. So, for me, I'm all done chatting. I'm all done talking. I know Amy is well done talking. What about you, Addie Bear? Anything else you want to say? Mm-mm. No, nothing else? Addie has nothing else to say. So with that, I'll let you guys go. I hope you had a wonderful holiday season all November 1st to January 1st of it. That entire Christmas season. Oh my God, that's two months. It was. <laughs> it's my favorite time of the world. Uh, I hope you all had a wonderful holiday season. I did. And uh, Happy New Year's. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful, safe, and happy New Year's Eve. Take care, everybody. Hey, you. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. No, to everybody. Bye-bye. Take care.